chapter 9, Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Amen. Boy, God is good, isn't he? And he is good all the time. It's not just a saying. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. It says, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. Time and chance happens to all. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. Uh, turn with me real quickly over to Jeremiah. And I want to speak to you this morning on, I don't really know what to title this. I've got several things that I feel like the Lord wanted me to speak this morning. And, but it's, it's almost like, are you ready? Are you prepared for your time and for your chance? Time and chance is an opportunity. God said, I give opportunity to everyone. Amen. An opportunity. Yes. There's a time and chance that comes in all of our lives. Yes. And you can look back on your own life, whether it's 30 years or 70, 80 years, and you can see over your lifetime that there's been opportunities Amen. that came to you. Amen. Some you took, some you didn't. Amen. But do you realize that opportunities that came, have you ever thought about, well, what if I had done this? Or what if I had done that? Yes. You ever just kind of thought about it? Yes. Where your life would have wound up at? I can tell you this, that whatever that time that you're probably thinking about right now, it would have absolutely changed everything. Amen. You may not have even been here in this room tonight. Amen. Probably wouldn't be Amen. if you took certain opportunities that came your way. And that's not saying that it was a bad choice or a good choice. It's just simply saying that God is giving opportunity. For every person, I believe there's an opportunity to be saved. Yes. I believe there's an opportunity to be gifted of God to every person. We are all, amen, anointed of the Lord. I mean, we have a call of God in all of our lives. Yes. You're not going to escape the call of God because you don't have a pulpit ministry. You have a call of God in your life. All of us are called to witness for the Lord. Amen. There's all of us have, have a job to do. We're the body of Christ, amen. And the hand can't say to the foot, I'll have no need of thee. Because we all have a function. There's something that God has called us to do. But I, I, would, I would say if I did put a title, it would be, don't miss your time of visitation. A visitation. Because the time and chance, is, it's like a visitation. It's like a, an opportunity to do something. To invest in something. To make a decision on a job. To make a decision for Christ. To make a decision in your ministry. Which way are you going to go? What direction are you going to go in? What voice are you going to listen to? What call are you going to obey? When that voice comes to you. Are you going to go or are you not going to go? Uh, you know, all these are decisions that you have to make. This is why it's so important to pray about every decision that you make. Pray that God's will will be done in that decision. Amen. Or you can be able to get yourself in a mess if you choose or make a choice that's not His will. And you say, Brother Ed, you mean you can make a choice that's not God's will? Well, of course you can. Yes. <laughs> we make those choices every day. Every time we drift a little, every time we're enticed and uh, we, we yield to a temptation, that's not His will, but it's your choice to be Either to us, you know, to uh, to give yourself to that uh, that temptation or not give yourself to that temptation. It's up to you. Amen. It's not up to God. God done all that He's going to do for you when He sent Christ to die on the cross for you. He shed His blood for you. Amen. 
He went a step further and he gave you his spirit. He comes and dwells in you. He leads you. He guides you. He reveals to you. He speaks to you. His spirit actually prays for you for the things that you don't know how to pray for. He actually prays for you. He does all of this for you. What else do you want him to do? He's not going to do anything else for you. But he expects you to do something, not only for him, but for yourself. He expects you to serve him. But in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20, it says, The harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment hath taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then? Why then? It's a question. Why? Then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? And then the first Verse of chapter 9 there, it says, Oh, that my head were waters, and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. God's people were in a mess. They were in trouble. Time and chance had went by them. There was opportunity given. You know, every time that Israel sinned, he sent a prophet to awaken them. You could go through the whole Old Testament, go into the New Testament even. God sent a prophet. He warned them. Amen. He sent them day and night. Amen. And he, he wept over his people. He did all that he could do. He gave them chances. He gave them opportunity. He gave them time over and over and over and over again to repent of their sins and to return to him. But what would happen? They would fall back into their sin, fall back into their ungodliness. They would fall back into uh, worship of other gods. And uh, they would continually fall back, but then God was so merciful and so kind, amen, that he would send prophets, amen, to speak to them, even though he knew many times that they would not hearken unto the words of that prophet, and he would tell a prophet, he said, I'm going to send you, but they're not going to hear you, they're not going to obey you, they're not going to pay any attention to you, and they're a hard-headed people, but I'm going to give you a head harder than their head, and I'm going to send you, and I want you to speak to them, because I I want to give them an opportunity to turn from their sins. That is the love of God. Even though I believe truly that God does know all things, amen, he's eternal, praise God. He knows, amen, the, the, the end from the beginning. There's no question about that. But listen, he knows what your decision is going to be before you make it, but you don't know what your decision is going to be. All of us have a decision or decisions in our lives. And most times that decision comes when opportunity comes. When time and chance comes. But the people of that hour, of that time, amen, they were, they were hurting people. And the question was, is there no balm, no healing in, in Gilead? Is there no hope here? Is there not anybody uh, ministering the word? Is there not anybody uh, taking, amen, uh, being in the place for people, taking a stand for people? Is there not anybody praying for the people? Is there not anyone standing in the gap for the people and making up the head for the people? Amen. See, I believe in that hour and that time there was desperation. There was trouble, amen. Uh, amen. Their time and their chance and their, their opportunity had come and gone and they realized amen uh, the harvest has passed the summer is ended and here we are and we're not saved amen. we're not delivered yes. we're not uh, we're not uh, helped ourselves we're not obeyed the voice of the Lord amen now turn with me to exec uh, Exodus chapter 3 and I've just kind of laid a little foundation here amen Trying to hold myself, like Brother Paul, I'm trying to hold myself back a little here. Look at Exodus chapter 3. As you're turning to Exodus, I want to make a comment here. You know, I don't have any bones to pick with anybody. You know what I'm saying? I don't have any, uh, you know, years and years ago, I used to fuss at everything, amen, it didn't agree with me. 
You know, I would, I would tell people, I'm gonna, you, you're going to receive this word, I have to shove it down your throat. Amen. I'm going I'm I'm to do this and I'm going to do that. You know, finally I understood, you know, that some are going to receive and some are going to fall back. Some are going to accept it and some are going to not to accept it. Amen. And this doesn't matter should be to me, amen, but I should obey the Lord and speak the word of God and let God's word have full course, amen, and do the job it's sent to be. So today, amen, I have no bones to pick with nobody, amen. I'm not fussing with anybody, amen. I believe, uh, and Brother David talked about the TV preacher. Look, I'm going to tell you something, you know, to me, they're doing what they're supposed to do, amen. Somebody's got to gather the tares, praise God, I mean. They're going to be gathered up the wheat and something's going to gather the tares. I don't have no bones to pick with them. Matter of fact, I think there's a lot of truth. Praise the Lord, that preached on television, amen? But the whole truth of what we're talking about has got to be received, the whole truth, amen? The truth of prosperity, amen? The truth of all these kind of teachers, amen? But what is the real meal? But what is the real deal? What, where, where is the word taking us to? So what I look at, amen, when I'm examining, amen, someone that's ministering, what is preaching, amen, I, I examine, well, where is this? Even though I, I may be disagreeing with what is something is being said, amen, I don't really like their attitude or, 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 or you, you may not be like me. I don't like the way maybe they, they look or they dress or I don't like the way they smile or something. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at all the carnal things, the outward appearance and all that, you know. And, but I try to bypass all of that, amen, and the thing that I disagree with and I try to find the direction, amen, that you're trying to take the people, praise the Lord. Are they taking the people, amen, into the glory of God? Are they taking the people, amen, Amen. To a realm of the spirit. Amen. Are they taking the people, amen, to a greater relationship with the Lord? Amen. If they're message about spiritual things and the inner man, amen, and eternity, or if they're message about the carnal man, amen, and the things of this life, amen, and what direction are they going in? See, that's the real thing that's really going on in all of our ministries, amen. What am I want to take you to today? What do I want to take you to in my ministry, amen. What I want you to be, amen, uh, uh, next year, amen, or the year after, amen, if we live that long, uh, amen. Well, what, what do I, I, I want to put something in you. I want to sow something in you. But I want to make sure what I sow in you is something good, pray the Lord. Uh, something that will feed your inner man. Uh, something that will feed your soul. Something that will prepare you uh, for the coming of the Lord Jesus. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, what direction is your ministry taking? up on their church doctrines, amen. They can be all mixed up uh, on, uh, on water baptism uh, or, or, or some of the other things of the word. But what is the real intent uh, of their heart? Uh, that's what you got to look for. Yeah, that's good. Because I'll tell you, the devil's a better preacher than anybody in this room. Amen. 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 He can prepare a message better than anybody in this room. He preached, amen, in the Garden of Eden. He preached to Jesus, uh, amen. He can appear as an angel of light or as a minister of righteousness uh, or as an apostle of Christ, uh, amen. The devil, amen, uh, amen. He's good at what he is doing, uh, and he'll use the word of God. Uh, he'll tell you enough truth, amen, to put a hook in you, amen. Uh, but what is his real intent? Uh, somewhere down the road, there's a perversion. Uh, somewhere down the road, there's a sidestep. Uh, there's a little trail that leads off uh, into a dark area, amen. So that's why you got to examine the intent of what that messenger is bringing, amen. Because the devil is leading you not to the starry gate of heaven, amen, but he's leading you to a devil's hell, amen, and perverting the gospel somewhere. Yes. But he's going to give you enough truth yes. amen. to hook you, amen. 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 Now, after saying that, let me just say this. Examine the direction by your spirit, not by your carnal brain. Your inner man, amen, is starving in most churches. The outer man is being blessed because of the messages of materialism and prosperity and things and all the things that the world has to offer. So if the intent of that messenger, amen, is to build you up in the flesh, and appease your flesh yes. and bless your flesh. Come on. Amen. Amen. 
That is not the direction that God has given them today. Nor is it the direction that God has ever given. Amen. 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 But it's the inner man, praise the Lord. Yes. So in Exodus chapter 3, verse 1, we find Moses approaching, amen, a burning bush. And he said, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. I do want to point out there that it says the angel of the Lord appeared to him out of the bush. And he looked and behold the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why? The bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Yes. This was Moses' opportunity. <laughs> This was his time and his chance. Yes, amen. His time and his chance. Yes. This was his opportunity. And I think someone said this, something similar to this, that here is the creator of the universe appearing as an angel in this bush. It was on fire. And right after that, he says, take off your shoes. Uh, yeah. Well, this is holy ground. And it gives him an opportunity. He speaks to him. As far as I can say, he didn't speak to him until this time. But he speaks to him. And he calls him by name. Yes. I don't know if this is how you look at stuff, but I'm looking at a bush talking to me. <laughs> And the bush is on fire. And it's not getting burned up. And all of a sudden, this bush starts talking to me. I mean, this way, Moses has got to look at this thing. You know, what in the world? What is this? As Sister Daniel would say. What is this? What is this? A bush on fire. Yes, Lord. Talking to this. And he said, I'm going to, I'm going to turn aside and, and I'm going to take a look at this bush burning. And when he turned aside and he went up to this bush that was burning, that's when he spoke to him. God spoke to him. See, God wants to speak to us. But he wants to get your attention. Because God wants your undivided attention when he speaks to you. And this is why I believe he appeared in that bush on fire. Amen. If you ever wonder, well, why didn't God just come down in a physical form and stop and say, hey, Moses, I've got, I've got, I've got a word for you. Why didn't he send a prophet to Moses? Why didn't he send somebody to talk to him? Why did he appear to him in a bush on fire? Because he wanted to get his attention. Sometimes God gets our attention in different ways and we're, we're startled by something. We're, we're shook up by something. Something unusual happens in our life. Maybe it's a tragedy. Maybe it's a, some kind of a problem that we, we didn't think was coming our way, amen. And, but it came our way and trouble comes a different way and all of a sudden, amen, uh, our attention has been drawn away from the course that we were walking, amen. We were going in one direction. All of a sudden, something got your attention and you turned aside, amen. Well, when Moses, amen, seen this time, he turned aside because God had got his attention with something, amen, so unusual, he had to go, Check it out. Amen. And when he did that, God spoke to him. Yes. And he spoke to him by name. Hey. And what he was doing, he was not only getting his attention, amen, he was letting him know who he was. Yes. Later he said, I am the God of Abraham, the Isaac, and Jacob. I'm the God of your father, amen. And he began to talk to him, amen. He said, I've heard the cry of my people. In other words, God said, I know what's going on 
in Egypt. I knew all about it all along, amen. But there was coming a time, amen, and a chance, amen, amen, for the peoples of God. And God needed a man, amen. He needed a man, amen, that he could use. He needed a man he could speak to. He needed somebody, amen, that he could get their attention, amen. And it got the attention of Moses, hallelujah. And he began to speak to him and reveal to him the call of God in his life. And now that Moses was fully aware, amen, that God was speaking to him. And he had got his attention. And he seen the opportunity there, but all of a sudden, Moses began to question his own ability. He said, God, you've made a big mistake here. I, don't, I can't speak plain. <laughs> Amen. I, 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 my, my, my mouth don't work right. I, I, I can't communicate. In other words, he began to make all these excuses. He said, well, who am I? Who am I to go to live with the people? I mean, who do you think you're talking about? God, look at me. I'm a nobody. Amen. I'm just some old piece of dirt. Amen. And he began to make all these excuses. Amen. About why he cannot obey the voice of the Lord. Amen. But my God been to speak to him and then God began to tell him he said who had made man's mouth amen and then and God began to amen, set aside all of his inadequacies that he was talking about amen and he sent him anyway I'm telling you it don't matter amen how rich you are how poor you are or how educated you are or how uneducated you are I'm telling you when God amen gets your attention begin to speak to you he's going to put in you everything that you need to accomplish what he's called you to do. He makes no mistakes. He didn't make a mistake with Moses and he didn't make a mistake with you. He knew what he would do when he called you. You say, but God, look at all the mistakes I've made. Look at all of my mess-ups. Look at all of my backslidings. Look, God, how that, amen, amen, I remember you spoke to me, and I began to do a work for you, but I got discouraged, God, amen, and then the next thing I know, hey, I was back on the bar stool, or I was back out in the world doing things that I shouldn't do, and now, amen, I can't obey you, Lord, because I backslid on you, and I'm not worthy to do anything for you. You're making excuses, amen, excuses, amen, that God has already forgiven God's already forgot about it. God don't know nothing about it. See, when you ain't been asked God to forgive you, it's your sins, amen, are not just there to bring up. No, your sins are forgotten, hallelujah. He don't know nothing about your sins. The call of God that called you, amen, is still there for you. He wants you to wake up, amen, and look at that burning and burn again and obey God for the end of all things in that hand. God didn't make a mistake when he called you. God didn't make a mistake when he anointed you. You've made all the mistakes. You've done all the things that God prayed. He made that you should have done. But Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you even to the end of the world. Amen. And the call of God. Amen. There was in Moses' life. Amen. God knew everything wrong that he would do. Amen. I mean, though Moses did a lot of things. Amen. Even though he was a man. Amen. After God. Amen. Amen. He was a man. Amen. That God had chosen. But yet he made a lot of mistakes. But the mistakes that he made, God knew every mistake he would have. And he called him anyway. He knew Peter would deny him, but he called him anyway. He knew Paul would resist the call of God in his life in the beginning. Amen. He said, how do you know that? I know that by what God spoke to him. Amen. On the road to Damascus. He said, it's hard. It's hard, Paul, to kick against the prince. He was saying, Paul, it's hard to resist me. It's hard to resist the call of God. It's hard. Amen. Amen. When you want to obey my voice, it's going to be hard on you, my friend. I said, it's going to be hard on you, my friend, until you give your to God and obey the word that God has put in your heart. You've got to shake yourself and awaken, amen, to the call of God in your life. Amen. What changes could have been done in people's lives? 
because you didn't take opportunity. But what changes can be made now in people's lives if you will take the opportunity amen. that God has given you even this day? Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Can you say amen? amen? Moses realized he was standing on holy ground. He realized this was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This was the eternal one. He felt unworthy. There's not a person on planet Earth that's worthy enough Amen. to do God's will. Not Amen. a single, Amen. solitary Amen. person. Amen. Nobody! Amen. I don't want to take you down a doctor too. God hates a proud look. Yes. Amen. Right. What God, amen, is calling. That's why, don't you realize, that's why he called Peter and James and John. Amen. This man. Uneducated in the Word of God. Amen. Didn't know the Word of God. Called people, amen. Tax collectors, amen. People, amen, that the rest of society looked down on. Yeah, he didn't go to the Pharisee and the Sadducee. He didn't go to the greatest teacher of that amen. era. He didn't go to the high priest, amen. He didn't go to those, amen, uh, amen, that, that were in authority in the church. No. Who did he go to? He went to those, amen. He could take, amen, and mold them and make them, amen, and be able to use them, amen. He couldn't use the Pharisee. He couldn't use the Sadducee, amen, and Paul, amen, amen. The, 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 one of the proudest of the Pharisees, he had to take Paul all the way down to nothing. He had to take Paul all the way down that he would count, amen, everything that he had but dumb that he might win Christ, amen. Amen. He took the one, amen. Amen. And had the position and had, amen, all the attention, amen, of the era of that time. Paul, amen, on his way to go sit, amen, in the Sanhedrin court. A man, amen, of great intelligence, able to speak various languages, could quote whole books of the Bible. But yet, that's not why he called Paul. Amen. That's not why he pricked his heart. He Put everything back in. So when that attention came, when that call comes, when that awakening comes in your life, for every one of us is going to have a visitation from God. You will have a visitation, and most of you have already had a visitation. You say, well, I don't remember it. Just think about it a little bit. And let God open up understanding when he spoke to you. It could have been in a dream. It could have been in a vision. It could have been about a brother or a sister that spoke to you. It could have been even just something that come over you and God just spoke to you. something in your heart. You didn't even know it was God. You thought it was your idea. Sometimes people think it was all their idea to come into this room, to come into this church. It wasn't your idea. It was the ordination of God. God leading you. God speaking to you. God guiding you. God moving you, God motivating you, God pricking your heart, amen, as it did Paul. Yes, Lord. Don't resist this call. Amen. I'm telling you, we're, we're, we're heading to the end when the last call is going out. Amen. I've been given chance after chance after chance, many opportunities in my life. Amen. But now I see the end of all things coming, coming fast. Each one of us, amen, has got a call of God in our lives that needs yet to be fulfilled. There's something, amen, in every individual, amen, that's in this room that God has spoke to you about doing something. Amen. It could be something in the Word. It could be something, to, a phone call you need to make to a loved one. It could be giving. It could be so many different things, amen, that God has spoke to you about. But listen, this could be your last opportunity to obey that voice, to obey that call of what God called you to do. There is an awakening going on all throughout the universe, all throughout the world. Uh, amen. A great awakening is occurring. Uh, amen. It's through the individual. It's through individual people, amen, that God is speaking to. Uh, he may not see a burning bush, but God is going to get your attention somehow. If he has to take everything that you got uh, away from you, let the enemy destroy everything you got. Uh, he's going to get your attention. He's going to wake you up. And he wants a people 
that will obey you. Amen. Let me say it this way. He's not going to make you do anything. Amen. He's not. He's not going to make you. He didn't make Paul. He pricks the heart. He pricks the heart. Yes. He speaks to the people. Yes. Yes. He gives them dreams. He gives them revelations. Yes. He speaks to their inner man. He speaks to their, their mind, their soul. He uses other people to speak to people. Yes. To lead you, to guide you. To disturb you at times. And then when you get a comfort zone, all of a sudden things go start going haywire, start going wrong. You don't know why. I'll tell you why God's speaking to you. There's something, amen, I miss in your life. There's something, amen, God wants to get your attention. Most times when trouble comes, amen, people get into prayer. A lot of people never pray until trouble comes. If you don't want no trouble to come, keep praying. But when you start, amen, you start, amen, drifting and you start things going your own direction, away from the plan of God in your life, see if trouble don't come. See if something don't come in your life, amen, to upset your little apple cart. Because God wants you on his pathway. God wants to speak to you, amen. He wants you in his plan, not in your own plans. Amen. And we can fail God. This is one thing that I finally figured out. Through all the, my studies on predestination and, and, the, and God, how God is so eternal, and, and, and thinking about the definition of, of eternal and eternity, how that there's no beginning or end, and, and how God, you know, He declared the end from the beginning. He knows all things. And then I'm thinking, you know, well, well God knows all about it anyway. This is going to happen anyway. Then I realize it's not going to happen. It's still a choice uh, that I have to make. Uh, Paul had to make the choice. Uh, amen. God was so good to Paul uh, that he struck him down. Uh, amen. On that road to Damascus. Amen. Uh, he had pricked his heart. Uh, he held the clothes of Stephen when they stoned Stephen. Amen. Uh, and I believe that's when, amen, God uh, began to prick his heart. Uh, but Paul did not yield uh, himself to that uh, pricking of the heart. Uh, God, Paul resisted God, uh, but God came, amen. Uh, he said, I've got to have that man. I've got to have that one. Uh, amen. Uh, he made me a good soul. Amen. If I just gotta wake him up, I just gotta straighten him out. He's gonna make me a good soldier. So what happened? God struck him down on the road to the master. He said, Paul, it's hard for you to take against the prince. It's hard for you to resist me. Amen. Amen. And you know the rest of the story. In Romans chapter 9, verse 17, the the Bible says there's four. All of chapter 9 reflects the predestined nation of God. Amen. He gives this example in verse 17 about predestination, about God's purpose. He said, for this scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So, amen. So he chose Pharaoh. Yes. Amen. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart. I've said many a time, amen. When Moses would come before Pharaoh and said, let my people go. Amen. I tell you, I believe what about the second or third play, Pharaoh would have done anything to get your people out of there. Amen. But his heart was hardened. God spoke to, amen, his heart. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh could not let them people go. Amen. His heart was so hardened. But God hardened his heart. And God, amen, got glory out of hardening the, uh, the Pharaoh's heart. But let me tell you something. Amen. He didn't just choose, amen, Pharaoh, amen, to do that to. Pharaoh, amen. God knew his heart anyway. God knew, amen, he proud. God knew him and he was evil. God knew that he would never accept him all along but he was went ahead and hardened his heart. Yes. Amen. 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 And you read through chapter 9 and then you get into chapter 10. Long about verse, you go through the verses there in verse 21. Paul reveals the true nature of God. Because the question, the question was, well who has resisted his will? How, how can you, how, how come he made me this way? Yes. Who are they? Is there anybody ever is, well, what, What's the big deal here? What's the deal? You, what do you mean? Esau, I hate him, and Jacob of my love. That report is never born. Because God 
moved. God knows. God sees. God is in the morning. Yes. But God didn't choose Esau to be a criminal. <laughs> he didn't choose Esau to be that way. He knew Esau was going to be that way. Yes. That's right. That's the truth. Amen. Because you don't, you don't understand the real true nature of God. The real true nature of God is in Psalm 103. The real true nature of God is throughout the whole entire Bible. Amen. His nature was always to save, to heal, to deliver, to bless. Praise God. That was always in. And listen, Paul reveals that in verse 21 of Romans 10. He said, but to Israel he said, all day long I have stretched for my hands unto a holy people? No. A righteous people? No. A people that loved him? No. I have stretched forth my hands all day long unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. If he didn't, if, if God didn't think it would change why did he stretch forth his hands to him? Why did he send prophets to him? Why did he, amen, do all of these things, amen, allow these things to happen with his prophets, amen? If he didn't think, amen, they should have a chance, an opportunity to turn from their sin. It's because the true nature of God was always to save and to heal and to bless. That's the true nature of God. The reason you've got to understand this is because the visitation that God has put in your own life, you can resist it or you can accept it. There is a call of God in our hour and our time like no other call has ever been given to a generation ever before, amen, but it's been given to this generation that we live in. There is a people, amen, that God is going to allow, amen, to obtain the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. There is a people, amen. See, the Bible says, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again, amen, the, the foundation of repentance, amen, to work, hey, and you know all of that, but he said, this will we do if God permit. We're in that hour, amen, of God permitting, and that's what God's speaking to people, you don't really realize it. We're worried about our sins, we're worried about our misgivings, we're worried about the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. We're worried about whether we can quit this or quit that. When our eyes should be on the prize. Let me tell you something. When you really get amen, a vision of Jesus, when you get a vision, amen, of the high calling of God, all of that carnal stuff will just fall away. Amen. But you got to press for it. There's something God said we got to press for. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says he had predestinated the people. Amen. To be conformed to the image of, of the Son of God. But I'm telling you, even though, amen, yes, it is predestinated because it's in God's word. God has declared there will be a people that's going to come to the image of my son. There is a people. And I put a ministry in my body. Amen. I gave them apostles. I gave them prophets. I gave them pastors. Evangelists. I gave them teachers for the perfecting of the saints until they all come in to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto, amen, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Amen. There will be a people. There is a call for that. There is a time and a chance for every one of us. Every one of us. But our vision, as long as your vision is earthbound, as long as your vision is on your problem, as long as your vision is on, uh, well, what, what am I going to do? Or, or can I get rid of this? Or can I get rid of that? Look, 
just let it go. The Bible says, lay aside, lay aside the weight and the sin. That doesn't mean the necessity. Lay it aside and get a vision, hallelujah, of the prize of the high calling of God. Can you say amen? Thank you, Pastor. A vision. Yes. Of something greater. Amen. Than your little rinky dick problems. Amen. Our little pity parties we have. Amen. I tell you, I'm ashamed of myself every time I have a pity party. Amen. I think, what is wrong with me? Amen. You know, most pity parties come when you got your eyes off Jesus. When you're looking at say, your problem, you're looking at your trouble, you're looking at your neighbor, you're wondering why so-and-so ain't in church, or you're wondering what happened to so-and-so, and you're wondering about this, you're wondering about that, your eyes is on Jesus, amen. But when you get your eyes back on Jesus, amen, I'm telling you what, amen, I'll wake and come, praise God, then all of a sudden, I'm pressing for the prize, amen, I got a call of God, I'm going on into perfection, I'm going on, I'm going to take something, I'm going to raise something. And I'm going to win this race. I'm going to run this race. Amen. You can't run no race if you get caught on sight. Amen. Go fishing down all these highways. You love the Lord. Amen. The God is sovereign. Yes, he's sovereign. That means he's God. <laughs> you know what I, mean? you know, I looked at the definition of Godhead one time. You know what it was? God. <laughs> And the guy was God here to me. He said, well, son, get your strongs and pointers out. And I put it in the strongs. Just read it there, you know. That way some people, God talked to him all the time. I know God talked to him all the time, but he ain't telling them that. Probably tell just the opposite. Amen. But, but he made dominant, superior, ruler. That's what I mean. You know what? the name of Jesus. Boy, that's all powerful Amen. name. Amen. Yes. Man, ain't nothing more powerful name in the universe than the name of Jesus. Amen. But I found that the word of God says this. It says in Psalms and word, He exalts his word even above his name. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. He said, my word is above even my name. Yes. That's how important the word of God is. More important than his name. Exalted above his name. His word. Yes, Lord. Lord. He will never, ever violate his word. Amen. Amen. If his word says, I, this day, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose what do you want to do? And then he's so kind. He gives him a hint to choose life. He says, Go. <laughs> choose, choose the blessings. I've said it many times the stupidest people in this world is those that want to accept Christ. Amen. The stupidest people in the world. Amen. He loved them so much, he said, Look, I'm going to tell you which is the best choice. Choose the blessing. Don't choose death. Don't be cursed. No. Amen. Choose life. Amen. Wow. Amen. Oh, Lord. So he gave us the power of choice. Amen. He gave it to Adam. Yes, he didn't say, I'm going to create Adam and make a puppet out of him. I'm just going to dangle with him and mess with him and play with him. You know, and I'm going to call him to do that. He don't really want to do it. Do this like a puppet. No. He didn't create Adam. Amen. To just control him. He gave him a choice. He gave him free will That's right. to choose Amen. whether he would serve him or not. Amen. That's how God was created man in his own image as a person, a person, a creature with a power of choice to serve him or not serve him. And that's why I say he is not going to make anybody serve him. He would have to violate his very word and the very intent of his creation in the beginning. Amen. He wants it that way. Because he wants you to love him. Yes. Yes. Come here. If 
I knew I had to make her love me. If I knew that I had to horsewhip her, to make her love me. Amen. You listen. Yes. Finally, I get her to say, I love you. And then I say, I will. Now she loves me because I made her love me. Now she loves me. What kind of wife would that be? Y'all don't have that kind of wife. You better go ahead and get through that one. But there are men that control their wives. They're beat their wives. There are men that could, there are women that wives that control their husbands. You listen. But when we have to control one another, we have to make one another do something. We have to, if you have to make that boy love you, it's useless. He'll never really love you. If God had to make us love him, even though he commanded us to love him, he's not going to make you love him. If he had to make you love him, it's useless. But if he gave you a free choice, you can love him or you can hate him. You can reject him or you can accept him. It's just up to you, hallelujah. That's when God wins, hallelujah. When he's got a people, amen, that love him for who he is. And that's why I'm so against, amen, the carnal prosperity message, amen. Not the real prosperity, but a carnal prosperity message that says, look, you can make a deal with God, amen. If you give God just so much, God's going to do this. He's required to do this, amen. See, you're trying to bargain with God, amen. And you're trying to get it, amen, to work. God, amen. He's the loan shark, amen. But this loan shark is not going to charge you to it. He's going to give you more money, amen. Listen. You're not going to be blessed that way. Amen. When you give to give by using the word, right. you're losing it all. Amen. Amen. But when you give out of love, yes. you just give because you love Brother Jonathan. You love our, our, our church. You love our ministry. You love what we're trying to do. Amen. And you give because you love. Oh, I guarantee you. Man, the blessings of God is coming your way. Ain't there's no doubt about it. The blessings of God because you're given not to get something. You're given because you love. Yes. And here again, it's a free choice that you make. Amen. That you make. So you're the opportunity. God is not in your heart. He said, you can come or you can go. <laughs> you can accept this. If you don't, I've got me somebody else that will. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. <coughs> See, there's people in this congregation right here. It's a valley of decision. You got the enemy, you got the devil right here saying you're a fool to have those kind of thoughts. You got Jesus on the other side. I'll never leave you. I'll be with you even to the end of the world. I will bless you. I will keep you. I will sustain you. I'll make a way where there seems to be no way for you. Come on. You got the end on the other hand. And he's talking to you. Don't do that. You can't make it. You've made too many mistakes. You've done messed up too much. A decision. It's up to you. It always winds up being up to you what direction you want to go the rest of your life. I don't know about you, but I, I, want, to, I want to play out the rest of my years, amen. amen. Doing whatever I can for God. Amen. 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 It doesn't make me no never mind for it's out what I'm doing as long as I know I'm in God's will. Amen. 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 And I believe that there's some folks here that feel the same way. Yes, amen. Amen. I'm not in this thing to play games, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He said, therefore, choose life. Opportunity is not here. Opportunity is here. The greatest opportunity for mankind ever. When the gospel is going to be preached throughout the entire world, millions, I still believe millions, are going to be born again. Yes, Lord. Yes. We hear reports. We hear reports all the time where those children of Muslims giving their life to the Lord. Amen. People in Israel, Jews, and they give coming to the Lord. 
hundreds, thousands, and have given their lives to God all over this world. We have such a problem with tunnel vision in our nation. We only see the problem in the White House. Amen. We don't see, amen, that there's a there's a God bigger than the White House. Amen. Amen. We, don't, we, we, we forget, amen, that we're serving a God, amen, that puts men in the office and takes them back out of office, amen. We, we forget, amen, we got a God, amen, amen, that if, if, if Trump is to be in our, another four years, he'll be there, don't worry about God, amen, because, amen, he's got a person, amen, that sees him, the time and the opportunity, amen, that was given him. Yes, he did. God gave him this opportunity. He seized it, and look, he's not giving up. He'll fight this thing, amen. I wish some of you was like Donald Trump. I said, I wish some of you was like Donald Trump and fight for something yeah. rather than giving up and caving in. Yeah. Yeah. Most of us would already give up and went back, amen, crying, amen. Look how mean they are. Look how they don't talk about me and run me down. Look how mean they were to my wife. And look how mean they are to my little boy. And look how mean they are. No, you got a man stand up there. He's like, he don't give a care what you say, amen. He's not going to be moved. I wish some of you would take it like that. Stand up against the devil. Stand up against the amen that tried to seize you and try to kill you. Our opportunity. Hallelujah. 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 Now, God, we need to get the fire back in our bones. We need to get something back in us. Some backbone back. Says I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to sit down. I'm going to stand up and take the That's the kind of man that the apostles were. That's the kind of man Peter was. That's the kind of man Paul was. Amen. He stood up, amen, against all of them, praise God. He didn't give a care what they did to him. He didn't care what they said. He had a call of God in his life. Amen. I, I, all my life, I've admired men with backbone. I have. I've always admired somebody, amen, amen. who stand up for something. Yes. Instead of getting in. Right. Amen. amen. Yes. The easiest thing you'll ever do is give up yes. and yes. shut up. Yes. And be quiet. Yes. That's the easiest thing to do. Just be quiet. Just mind your business. Set up and let everything go. Yes. Just let it all go to hell. I mean, it ain't worth fighting for anyway. That's the attitude that you have a lot of people. Yes. And that's why our country's in the trouble it's in the day. Right. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. God. One more set of scriptures I'll quit. I want to pray for you though. Psalm 78. I'm like Brother Michael, the way I've got a dozen scriptures. <laughs> but, but I don't have enough, so enough. Well, Mike, what I do is get to the place where I think they can't take no more. And I ain't sure I can take it either. <laughs> Psalm 78, very familiar. Verse of Scripture. Verse 35. You got it? Amen. Say amen. amen. And they remembered that God was their rock. And that God, their high God, their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. Remember, he's talking to us. But he, being full of compassion, this is God, full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time, Turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy one of Israel. They remembered not his hands on the day when he delivered them from the enemy. 
I want you to think about that. I want you to let it sink in. How they limit the Holy One of Israel. That's God. They limited God. When Jesus was among his own people in his own country, he could do no miracles, but lay his hand on a few sick folk. And he marveled, he was amazed at their unbelief. They limited God. And what can go on? It shows you plainly how you can limit God in your life. Amen. How that the call of God could be there. The anointing could be there. The gift would be there. You're washed in the blood of the Lamb. You're saved. You're born again. Thank God. You got that far. But the next level, <laughs> the next level is obedience to the call. Amen. This is where we basically limit God all the time. We don't speak well. We're uneducated. We're too ugly. We're too skinny. We're too fat. We don't speak well. I live in a little town. I live in a big town. Nobody's going to hear me. We limit, we're limiting God. Every day of our lives, I believe, we limit God. I can look back on my life when I started out with you about how opportunities have come in my own life and how that so many times I backed off because I felt like I couldn't afford it, I couldn't do it, and I limited God. And I look back and I say something about that, God, what if I hadn't done that? What if I hadn't caved in the cost of the expense what, what, what if I had not made this decision? How many people, more, more people, could I have impacted? How many more people could have been Amen. saved, blessed, healed, delivered? Because perhaps I limited God in my own life. Because I didn't think I was adequate enough to do what God is speaking me to do. I didn't think I had the the word, the command of the language well enough to be able to communicate it right or whatever excuses I use. Maybe I didn't feel like God had gifted me enough to really penetrate the kingdom of darkness like I really wanted to. All kinds of excuses we all make. When I look back, I say, God, I've lived with you all my life. I've lived with you all my ministry. I've lived with you. God, I don't want to do it no more. I wish somebody would say, I don't want to do it no more. Somebody said, I'm just satisfied. No. No. You never, if you're satisfied, you're in trouble. I'll never be satisfied until I get to the place that God called me to be. I'll never be satisfied, Brother Paul, until I can fulfill what God called me to do. And now, approaching a, a age of my life when I know time is running out for me, but time is also running out, amen, for the world. And I'm saying, God, I might have just as much time as anybody that's alive on this planet. You may be coming back within the next five years or so. You may come back, I don't know when, but I don't know how much time we have left. Uh, God, give me the strength. Come on, somebody who's staying with me. God, give me the strength. Give me the anointing. Give me that whatever it's taken, whatever I'm lacking in my life. Give it to me. Give me the strength, the inner strength, to stand up against the enemy and try to rob me of my time and my chance and my opportunity to do something for God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you right now, it's time. If you've got a call of God in your life, let's get up these altars. Let's begin to reach out. Come on right now. Right now while the anointing is here.